Hey Technostuds, in this video, let's start talking about dynamic routing protocols and how dynamic routing protocols get the information from one router to the next. In this video, we'll start out by talking about the function of a dynamic routing protocol. Then we'll get a bit into the history and just take a look at what the development of these dynamic routing protocols has been over time. And then finally, we'll wrap things up by talking about different components that dynamic routing protocols use to get this information from one device to the next. In our last module, we went over some ways that a router would learn of other networks. Well, one of those networks is a directly connected network. When we set up a local link on a router, then it becomes aware of that network that it's directly connected to it. So for router one, when we set up this interface, it then learns that that is a network that's connected to it. It's a directly connected network. And then it learns of this network because once again, we set up that interface and then it understands that it's part of that network. What it doesn't know is about these remote networks. And in this example right here, there's many remote networks that it needs to learn. Well, what a dynamic routing protocol does is allows two of these devices to speak together, or actually really all of these devices to speak together. And they will transfer information back and forth. So that way, router one then learns of all of the directly connected networks that layer this layer three switch has. It learns of the directly connected network that this router two has, which is this network right here. And then it also learns of this uh, distant remote network that's attached to this router three. All of that information goes into the routing table on R1, and now that R1 knows where to direct traffic. So that's what a routing, a dynamic routing protocol does, is it allows uh, communication to happen between two of these devices. You don't need to know an in-depth history about these routing protocols, but you do call us out just to drive home the point that there are many different routing protocols, each with their strengths and weaknesses, and each have developed differently over the ages. So as an example of this is RIP version 1 came out in 1988, then RIP version 2 came out in 1994, that had some adjustments as we uh, brought on things like the LSM. And then RIP NG came out when we started developing IP version 6. So there are different reasons to choose the different routing protocols that we would implement on our network. There are three components that make up a dynamic routing protocol. First of all is the data set. Then we have the messages. Then we have the algorithm that it uses to determine how to interpret the data. And so what that looks like is like for RIP, let's say, it has a different set of tables, a different set of databases that go into RIP and how RIP functions. And that's gonna be different than the data set and the tables and the databases that something like OSPF or EIGRP would use. Same thing with the messages and how the messages get transferred back and forth between these devices. Those messages are gonna look quite a bit different depending on what routing protocol that you use. And then finally, the algorithm is the set of instructions, the set of rules, the set of uh, processes that the data goes through to determine how it's going to route the information. And there are some drastic differences between how RIP works and how EIGRP works and how OSPF works. So these are the different components that make up that, uh, that are designed to go into these dynamic routing protocols. In this video, we talked about dynamic routing protocols. We start out by talking about some functions that the dynamic routing protocol has a little bit about the history, and then we wrap things up talking about the three components a dynamic routing protocol has. The three components being the messages that are sent back and forth, how it transfers the data, 
how it stores that data in databases and tables, and then finally, how it calculates the best path using an algorithm. So those are the three components, the data set, the messages, and the algorithm that, a that these different protocols will use to determine the best path. So we're gonna start using that information now as we move forward in future videos.